Hello there and welcome to the 8-man hard mode firebrand and stormcaller boss fight guide. My name's Hayate, and today we'll be covering everything you need to know to successfully handle the second fight in the explosive conflict operation. For this encounter, you'll want to bring a standard composition of two tanks, four DPS, and two healers. Due to the inherent mechanics for this fight, I highly suggest you bring a balanced group of two melee DPS and two ranged DPS. However, any composition will be capable of beating this fight but an even composition will give you the most benefit. Later I'll explain how to handle this fight with any DPS composition. So let's jump right into the DPS requirements for this fight. This encounter has an enraged time of 6 minutes and 20 seconds. Both Firebrand and Stormcaller have an individual health of 3,350,942 HP for a combined total of 6,701,000 884 HP. Additionally, you'll face Trandoshan shooter ads throughout the encounter. These have an individual health of 80,710 HP. Each wave of ads will contain five of these for a total wave health contribution of 403,550 HP. You'll encounter four of these waves, so multiplying this figure by four gives a total ad health contribution of 1,614,200 HP. We'll want to add this figure to our total health for the tanks themselves to get a more accurate DPS analysis. In doing so, the total health pool for this encounter comes in at 8,316,084 HP. Dividing this total by our enrage time, we find a total DPS requirement of 21,884 DPS. Since your tank should be capable of pushing at least 1,500 DPS each, we'll adjust this figure by 3,000 for a new adjusted total DPS requirement of 18,884. Dividing this number by 4 gives a DPS requirement per DPS player of 4,721 DPS. Multiplying this figure by our enrage time gives a total damage responsibility per DPS player of 1,794,021. This is the number you'll want to push your total damage done to if you're a DPS player. So on to mechanics. There are a lot of little details to this fight, so let's jump right in and go over what you need to know. To help organize this information better, I'll be discussing Firebrand's abilities first. There are seven mechanics to note specific to Firebrand. Number one, Missile Blast. Missile Blast is Firebrand's standard attack. This ability is a conal cleave and happens every three seconds. Number two, Incinerate Armor. This is probably one of the most important abilities to understand. This is a four second channeled attack that places a debuff on Firebrand's current target for 15 seconds and removes all armor from the affected target. Number three, Missile Barrage. This is a high damaging ability that goes out after Incinerate Armor. This has a very high probability of one-shotting the player holding the Incinerate Armor debuff. This ability is also a conal attack. Number four, Targeted. This mechanic applies a yellow circle on a random raid member off the tanks. This ability additionally applies a debuff that needs to be cleansed. Once the debuff is cleansed, the yellow circle will drop at that location. Once the debuff expires, a missile will be launched to the location of the yellow circle. Additionally, this mechanic drops lightning spires every 15 seconds. These spires remain active on the ground floor for 15 seconds, so this means as you see the first disappear, the next one is inbound, so be ready to move when you see this. Number 5. Mortar Barrage this applies red circles to the entire ground level of the encounter. Standing in a red circle will cause the player to take a massive amount of damage. Number 6. Mortar Volley. This is a 25 second channeled attack, damaging anyone caught outside safe zones. The damage from this ability occurs every 3 seconds. I'll discuss this mechanic in greater detail a bit later. Number 7. Soft Enrage. If Stormcaller dies before Firebrand, a Soft Enrage mechanic is activated. Firebrand will start to cast a 120 second Mortar Volley, which acts in the same capacity as the 25 second version of this attack. This ability, however, does increase damage during the Soft Enrage. 
Okay, so let's go over Stormcaller's abilities now. There are five mechanics to note specific to Stormcaller. Number one, Zap Attack. Zap Attack is Stormcaller's standard attack. This ability is a conal cleave and happens every three seconds. Number two, Double Destruction. Similar to Firebrand's Incinerate Armor, Double Destruction is arguably the most important Stormcaller ability to understand. Double Destruction is a 4.1 second channel that applies two debuffs to the selected target that increases all damage taken from Stormcaller abilities. If one player has both debuffs, that player will instantly die on the next tick of damage from the debuffs. Number 3. Electric Discharge this ability is a large conal attack directed towards Stormcaller's current target. This has a very high probability to one-shot anyone under the Double Destruction debuff. Number 4. Electric Disturbance This ability has lightning spires dropping to the ground that damages anyone inside of its radius. These can hit for quite a large amount of damage upon impact and should never be stood in. Number 5. Soft and Rage if Firebrand dies before Stormcaller, a soft enrage mechanic is activated. Stormcaller will start casting ultimate destruction infinitely every two seconds. This ability targets random raid members and applies single destruction on the first application. Single destruction is a damage over time ability that also causes the player to take 200% increased damage over its duration. On subsequent hits from ultimate destruction, an ultimate destruction debuff will be applied to the target. Similar in every aspect to single destruction except ultimate destruction increases damage taken by 100%. These debuffs last for 35 seconds and stack with one another. The last two mechanics I want to mention are shared between the two tanks themselves. Number 1. Defensive Systems. This is a 6 second channeled ability that upon completion knocks back anyone standing on the tanks. Additionally, at the conclusion of this channel, a buff is applied to both tanks. This buff causes the tanks to take 95% less damage from all sources for 25 seconds. Number 2. Harden Rage During the Harden Rage on this encounter, any member standing on the tanks takes increased damage. This damage increase additionally scales over time by approximately 5% every 3 seconds. So now that you know all the mechanics, let's discuss how to put all of this into a working strategy. Let me start first with positioning of your group relative to the bosses. We suggest positioning your tanks roughly here and at this angle to account for the cleaves inherent to both bosses. For your DPS players, we suggest placing DPS in these areas. There are a few different ways to move the DPS around these areas, and I'll go over those during the strategy explanations. For your healers, you'll want one healer on one of the tanks, and the other healer in this area. I highly suggest you put your most mobile healer in this area. If you have two healers of the same class, put your more experienced raid healer in this location. So the flow of the encounter itself is pretty simple. It's more or less about getting the cycle correct and then repeating it. For phase one, as you start the fight and your tanks pull the boss, you'll want all raid members on the tanks themselves except for one healer. As raid members get on the tanks themselves, you'll see a debuff named Magnetically Stabilized Activate. This debuff makes the player less likely to be targeted by either tank. The healer left on the ground will receive the targeted mechanic and will need to cleanse themselves and kite the lightning spires. Make sure if you find yourself doing this you do not move in front of the tank. If you take the frontal cleave, you will most likely die. Stormcaller will cast double destruction 15 seconds after you initiate the fight, as well as any time you come back to phase 1. Double Destruction requires that your tank place at least two players in between Stormcaller's attack and themselves. If done properly, this will apply one debuff to each player. As a rule, your tank must not get this debuff. As soon as this ability ends, those with the debuff must clear the front of the boss. If they take the cleave attack, they will die instantly. Our preferred method for handling this is to have the tank move the attack 
to the predetermined players and then after the ability finishes, move back to their original location. This helps reduce the amount of moving players during this mechanic and helps those chosen remain on the boss for DPS uptime or continued healing without having to move. Three seconds after double destruction ends, Firebrand will start to cast Incinerate Armor. The big point to note here is whoever gets Incinerate Armor cannot hold aggro on Firebrand. There are a few ways to pull this off, and I'll go over those during the strategy explanations. At the following percentages on either tank, defensive systems will activate. 79%, 59%, 39%, and 19%, starting phase 2. If a tank is pushed to one of these percentages while casting an ability, they will not push to defensive systems until after the current ability is finished. As this ability starts to channel, you'll enter into Phase 2 of the encounter. At the start of Phase 2, two shields and five adds will spawn. Shield locations are randomized, but will always be in one of three locations. The shield on Stormcaller side will contain two adds, and the shield on Firebrand side will contain three adds. The shield in which these adds remain is also a mechanic in and of itself. Each shield spawns with 18,440 HP. During defensive systems, Firebrand will be casting Mortar Volley, which will apply between 160 to 200 damage to the shield every 3 seconds. While inside this shield, you'll gain the defensive shield buff. This buff provides immunity from Mortar Volley. For this reason, you cannot use any AoE abilities inside the shield. If the shield dies, you'll be unprotected and will need to make your way to another shield. And if both shields die, it will be very difficult to maintain health during Phase 2. The tank currently on Stormcaller as defensive system starts will have their own individual mechanic during Phase 2 and will not move into the shields. During Phase 2, the tank on Stormcaller will be kiting Lightning Spires. These drop on the tank's position every 3 seconds. You'll want to have your tank kite these spires around close to the shield so they can receive heals. A good trick when kiting these is to drop a spire, move a few steps, and drop another, essentially stacking them. This reduces the amount of room needed to place the spires and helps keep the ground floor organized. Furthermore, if you happen to be a vanguard or a power tech, you can use hold the line or hydraulic override as the defensive system channel is ending to maintain your position on the tank, and can drop the first three spires on the tank itself. By the time defensive systems ends, the first four spires will disappear. This means you must ensure that the last four spires are dropped in a location that does not block your group from returning to the tank, or overlapping into a position where group members will need to be. Once defensive systems is over, you'll reposition your group as you had it in phase 1, and continue through the mechanics again. You'll rinse and repeat phase 1 and phase 2 four times. Once either tank drops below 19%, you will no longer deal with defensive systems. So there are three different ways to tackle this fight, depending on your group composition. The first strategy is to simply just play the mechanics as designed. What we like to do for this strategy is to split the raid frame into two groups, each containing one tank, two DPS, and one healer. One group will tank each tank. Generally we have the healer with Firebrand be the healer kiting the targeted mechanic, since healing is a bit more demanding on Stormcaller, and they can just cleanse themselves to remove the targeted applied debuff. As Incinerate Armor goes out, you'll have your tanks physically swap, so the tank with Incinerate Armor is not one-shotted by Firebrand. You'll have each side DPS their specific tank until defensive systems. You'll then have your DPS split to the shield that pertains to their specific tank, and rinse and repeat this process until one tank reaches 19%. Once this happens, you'll want to bring both bosses down as close together as possible. This strategy is one that can be used for any group composition, and is what we consider the standard strategy for the fight. The second strategy is very similar to the first, but requires a melee DPS with the ability to taunt. For this strategy, 
you would follow everything as in Strategy 1 until Incinerate Armor. As Incinerate Armor begins to channel, have the taunt-capable DPS take Firebrand and the Incinerate Armor debuff. Once this happens, you'll want your tank on Firebrand to taunt back. This strategy keeps your tanks from having to swap. The third strategy is my preferred strategy, and can be done with any group composition. For this strategy, you'll place all ranged DPS here, and all melee DPS here. Your non-kiting healer will be here, the tanks will be positioned here, and your kiting healer will still be positioned throughout here. For this strategy, you'll have all DPS attack Firebrand. As double destruction goes out, you'll have your tank turn to this location and place it on your ranged and heals. If you have all melee in your group, you'll need to designate one melee to leap back during double destruction and stand with your healer. Afterwards, they can go back. As double destruction ends, the tank on Stormcaller will need to taunt Firebrand and move back into position. The tank on Stormcaller will take the Incinerate Armor debuff. As soon as that is done, the tank on Firebrand will taunt back. This effectively accomplishes the same thing an actual tank swap would without the need for a physical swap. This however depends solely on your Stormcaller tank's ability to multitask these two mechanics back to back. The other benefit to this strategy is you push defensive systems percentages so quickly that you'll only ever get one double destruction. Once defensive systems activates, you'll split your group into the two shields as you normally would while the Stormcaller tank kites lightning spires. You'll then rinse and repeat this process until you hit 19%. After the 19% defensive systems, you'll swap to Stormcaller and DPS Stormcaller to dead. Afterwards, you'll swap and finish off Firebrand, who should be very close to dead. Keep in mind that once Stormcaller dies, Firebrand will start his Soft Enrage. So at this point, you can put all of your ranged DPS, tanks, and healers in the shield that spawns, and DPS Firebrand down with immunity. Melee DPS, however, will still take damage while on Firebrand. So that's the fight, guys. Understanding the mechanics and sticking to proper execution of those mechanics will get you through this fight with no problem. There are a lot of mechanics to be aware of, and a lot can go wrong if they're messed up, but hopefully this video has given you the information you need in understanding these mechanics and coming up with a sound strategy that will work best for your specific group composition. So if this video helped you, feel free to pay it forward and help us by dropping us a like and subscribing. If you have any questions or think of something I may have missed, please feel free to leave that in the comment section below. So until next time guys, take care and enjoy the fight.